What is going on YouTube? Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today in this video, we're going to be unboxing and also doing the hands-on together with the Intuito Benchmark test of this very nice device that came from the website coolycool.com and it is called the Elphone S7. A couple years ago, I remember when Samsung released their Note line, a lot of people were criticizing it because of the size, including Apple itself. Uh, they also criticized the S Pen, they criticized the Edge Green, and after a while, we became so used to them that now we miss it way too much, at least myself, with the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. So now other companies are trying to adopt their design to make something appealing out there to the eyes of the consumer for a very affordable price, and I think they are succeeding. This device in particular uh, comes in many different variants. One of them is the two gigabyte model with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. You have the second one, which is uh, three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. And then you have the one that I currently own right here, which is the four gigabyte model with 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, even though there is a case inside of the Elphone box, Coolie Cool decided to send me these promotional items and one of them is a screen protector that according to them, it is explosion proof. Now, I believe that this is a great way to make fun of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 in my opinion. As you guys know, it got recalled from the market. As a matter of fact, it got banned from the market and that's because they were exploding. So now they are supposedly selling these uh, screen protectors that are explosion proof. Uh, we also got here a smart flip cover. This is also recommended since uh, the device that we are about to see has a curved display, uh, also known as an edge screen. And yes, they are easy to break, so you want to go ahead and protect the screen as much as you can. Getting a look here at the box itself, we can notice that it does look quite similar to the Samsung Galaxy S5 box. We do have here the Elphone logo. On the bottom says Elphone S7. On the left hand side is plain, on the right hand side is plain. On the top, you got a barcode here for inventory purposes. This is only used by the company coolly cool and on the back here we have some information about the display this is a 5.5 inch display it is bezel-less and curved which is really really cool now something that I still can't explain is the fact that this is an LCD display and for some reason they were able to curve it I thought that was impossible but yes it's really interesting to see how well they made this device so getting a look inside let's go ahead and take this cover off and here we find the product itself I got the blue color version uh, this is the model with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage as I mentioned earlier so I'm just gonna give you here a quick sneak peek and here is the beauty as you guys can tell from the front side it looks almost identical to the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 as a matter of fact I don't have the original any longer but I do have the replica and we can see that they look almost identical with the exception that this one is a bit smaller Keep in mind that the original Samsung Galaxy Note 7 had a 5.7 inch display together with a stylus, something that we would not find here with the Elphone S7, but it's still very, very close, including the color itself. So setting this aside, let's go ahead and take a look here at the device. On the front there, on the top, we have the ear speaker together with the proximity and light sensor and a 5 megapixel sensor camera. We do have on the bottom here a home key. This is also a back key and it serves as a fingerprint scanner, which is really, really cool. On the left hand side here we have just a SIM tray, it does support TF cards up to 128 gigabytes and also nano SIM cards which is really really nice. On the right hand side we find here the volume rockers up and down together with the power key. Then towards the bottom we have there the uh, micro uh, USB port. Now I was surprised that you know they didn't include the uh, USB type C port as I am getting used to it but it's still the micro is a lot more popular and easier to find accessories for it. We do have the microphone and also the loudspeaker which is on the right hand side together with the metallic frame and we can notice that once again it looks very similar to the Samsung, um, at least the Samsung Galaxy S7 line or the S line if you want to call it that way. On the top there we have the 3.5mm headphone jack together with the antennas for reception and I do like the color. I think it stands out quite well and to be honest with you guys on camera it doesn't look as appealing as when you see it in real life. And that's exactly what happened to me when I saw a couple of Chinese videos out there. So we can see that the display goes from one corner to the other corner. And this is not fake whatsoever. On the back side of the phone, we find a 13 megapixel sensor camera. Unfortunately, it doesn't have 4K recording, nor has optical image stabilization. We do find the LED flash. Inside of the phone, we have a non-removable battery of 3000 milliamps. And the processor on this one is the MTK6797. It's a DECA core processor. It's clocked at 2.1 gigahertz. It has the Mali um, A80 for the GPU. And it comes with the Android 6.0 Marshmallow. The resolution of the display is 1920 by 1080. It is IPS. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and set this aside. Inside of the box, we find a divider, very nice and well presented. We have another divider where inside we're going to find that case that I was mentioning before. We had the same uh, ejector tool. Now talking about the ejector tool, I don't have another one around here and I just dropped this one. Let me go ahead and pick it up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and briefly here open the SIM tray on this S7 device and we can see that it does support one nano size and a TF card on there, which is really, really nice. Actually, it is a dual SIM device as well. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. You can fit two nano SIM cards on there, which is really cool. We do have here the USB cable, nothing too special. It's just a regular micro USB. Okay, and it's right here. It looks very similar to the ones that Samsung designs. And then we have the wall charger. This is supposedly a regular wall charger. And I can show you here the specs right there. It's a five volt, two amp charger. It is supposedly considered fast, but it's not really designed to be that way, honestly. It is just a standard wall charger. So now that we talked about the physical aspects of the L phone S7 and also the content inside of the box, I think it's time to go ahead and power it on and see what's underneath here, the Android 6.0. I believe that this is running almost a clean version of the Android 6.0, meaning that it doesn't carry any major bloatware, doesn't carry any, you know, any of that crap that most Chinese devices do carry, especially the ones that we see from Meizu, Xiaomi and such. They carry a lot of bloatware and also I think that this animation has been seen by other L phone devices so there's nothing special so far about the operating system on this particular phone. Now something that we're going to be seeing uh, soon is here the curved display. We're going to notice that yes it is a true curved display which is something that I was looking forward to because as we know sometimes the Chinese are not truly honest about this uh, you know these devices sometimes but with this particular one I haven't seen any problems now even though you guys at first glance might see that it does have bezels this is a true bezel-less display you can't see the bezels at all so here we have the lock screen very common for the Android 6.0 when we unlock it here we're going to find the operating system and again very simplistic very clean Overall, I did download already some of the applications that I usually like to download, including the Intuitive Benchmark Test, in which we're going to be completing in just a moment. We do have here a five-point multi-touch screen, and we're going to be confirming that right now. It doesn't go above that, so that's a good thing, and not so good because this is a little bit outdated. By now, most devices out there in the market, at least the flagships, they are all 10-point uh, multi-touch screen, so they are a little bit behind on that aspect. Um, also here, when I scroll through the pages, I want to show you here, at least from this application, that it does curve out. I'm not sure if you can see that here from the camera app. So it does curve out a little bit. We do have here the camera itself. Now, a lot of people out there were commenting that the camera was not so great, but honestly, I have tested it a little bit. I'm not sure if maybe it got the finished model, but according to the website, I'm getting the pre-production model. The camera is decent. I mean, considering the price of this phone is $229, you really can't win it all. Now, the only thing I don't like about this device is the fact that it doesn't come with NFC and it doesn't have optical image stabilization on the camera. Now, for 4K, I really don't care because even on my Samsung Galaxy S7, which has the ability to record in 4K, I still don't do it. I record in 1080p at 60 frames per second. So, at least on that behalf for the recording, I really don't care. But now, the optical image stabilization is something that I got quite used to with the Samsung Galaxy S7 and even the Note 7 that I had before. So, not being able to have it on this device is a little bit of a bummer. But I still think the camera does quite well. I really don't know why people are criticizing it so much, especially for the price. I think the phone is definitely a bargain. So another thing I want to check here is the score that I already got in the Intuitive Benchmark test, but um, I will be testing it again. Uh, of course, fast forwarding it, so far I got 70,815, as you guys can tell. If you go here into information, we can see that the Android is the 6.0, is 64 bits. The model S7, the Mali T880, we have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. We don't have a 60 megapixel sensor. This is a true 13 megapixel sensor, so I guess it has been interpolated. We have the IMEI information and such. We do have 64 gigabytes of internal storage. The uh, MTK6797, I believe it's also known as the Helio X20. We do have there the cores is 10, meaning DECA core. Um, let's continue to go down here and confirm the operating system. Also, the display has 480 PPI. Um, 
let's go ahead and check here the front facing camera is saying 6.2 megapixel but according to the website it's a true 5 megapixel sensor camera the battery is 100 percent it's a 3000 power million battery and there we have it the android sdk is the 23 confirming that this is the android 6.0 Okay, so I also downloaded this application that helps me confirm all the information, at least for the processor side. And it gives you a little bit more information than Antutu. So here we can see once again the model. We have the Android version 6.0. We got the display. Here's where uh, it confirms 480 PPI. The processor is a Dega Core. And there we have the processor name in full. Now keep in mind that I haven't done much with it yet, so maybe in the future as you download more applications and stuff, it'll get a little bit slower. Um, the Play Store and all the Google apps are working as intended. I didn't have any issues whatsoever, including the Wi-Fi. Um, I did have to charge the phone because it came with about 27% of battery power, so I don't think that was sufficient to complete the hands-on on, on this particular model. I did take here some pictures. Um, excuse the mess on the kitchen, but this is the kitchen picture that I just took. I mean here through the camera you can't really see the details but when you see this on the computer it doesn't look that bad as people were you know saying um, I read a lot of comments on other videos and they were saying that the camera was absolute crap but considering the price of this phone I don't think it's bad whatsoever so the next thing we're going to do here is go ahead and test the fingerprint scanner by the way I'm going to go here directly into settings just to check this out we do have here or somewhere around here we have the storage okay you can confirm that it is 64 gigabytes also we got the memory which is the ram it is also four gigabytes okay so none of this information has been fake whatsoever if you go about device here you can see that it is the android 6.0 marshmallow once again so uh, now let's go ahead and jump back into settings and check the fingerprint scanner um, i believe it's somewhere around here on security let's go ahead and check it there we go security Lock screen, let's go ahead and change it to swipe or front swipe to fingerprint. And now let's select continue. Okay, set up screen lock. Let's put a pin. Let's do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's select the second one. Done. And now next, and there we go. It's really responsive, to be honest with you guys. It's really fast, as you can tell. So far, it misread it one time. Okay, done. All right, so I believe I have set up the screen lock to the fingerprint. Let me just go ahead and confirm that here with you guys. So yes, let me go ahead and lock it. Let me wake it up. And there you can see the little fingerprint scanner logo right there so it's really responsive let me try the one that I didn't record just for the sake of it to confirm that it is real and as you guys can see is not accepting it so let's just try a couple times here and then you guys saw that even with the screen off all you have to do is just put your thumb on top of it and it'll wake it up it's really responsive honestly wow I'm impressed Okay, and now the last thing we're going to complete here is the Antutu benchmark test to see what is the new score. Here we go. So here for my surprise, we have a score that it is dramatically different from the one that I got before, which was about 70,000. I'm pretty sure that either the application at some point crashed or maybe is not doing very well with the uh, Deca Core processor that we are running on here. But as you guys saw before, we had a score of 70,000. So please don't take the score as the final score, as I am sure that this is absolutely incorrect. Now keep in mind that this device is the pre-production model and it's not yet finished, meaning that the operating system is going to be different on the final device i believe it's going to be carrying the android 7.0 and if it does have the android 6.0 it's going to receive an update via air so that you can get the latest software in the market 
So with this being said, if you guys have any questions, you know exactly what to do. Just leave your comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on my next one.